Hello, this is Spicy, local possum. So for this video, I wanted to talk about a couple of art tips that I feel like would be helpful for artists starting out. So this was inspired by just advice I wish I heard when I was a little bit younger. Um, some of this advice I, I learned earlier and some of it I learned as soon as like last month. So anything that makes the art journey a little bit easier. And I hope some of these tips help. Starting with number one, uh, practice with intent. I feel like it's fine to practice mindlessly, like, but if you have no clear goals on what you want to improve ever, <laughs> um, I've, things could get muddled along the way. An example of practicing with intent would be like sitting down and being like, okay, today I'm going to practice color. I don't know, a week later or the next day. Today I'm going to practice shading. So that is just practicing with intent. Um, personally, when I first started, I just drew my characters over and over and over again. I did develop some bad habits because I wasn't really learning and there was no new information being processed other than muscle memory. Number two, your sketchbook doesn't have to be beautiful. In the age of sketchbook tours, and don't get me wrong, I also participate in this culture. It does seem like every sketchbook has to be beautiful or whatever. Your sketchbook is whatever you want it to be. I personally found it very important to keep a what I call an ugly sketchbook. This doesn't have to be an extra sketchbook. This could be your main sketchbook or it could be mixed along everything else. I just feel like there needs to be a safe space where you can just draw freely and it doesn't matter if it's beautiful or not. I feel like what definitely helped me get out of the bad mindset of having it to be perfect was to buy a cheap sketchbook. And that segues into the next thing. Now this is personal, um, which is use a pen to build confidence. So you know those sketchy lines? Um, if you're a beginner artist, you might do these. They kind of look like this. And I mean, they're all right. They're not great for wrist work. So it's better to do big swooping lines with your whole arm because repetitive wrist motions can be pretty damaging for your arm in the long run. Number four, start your ideas with analog tools. So I actually learned this one from the book Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon, which I highly recommend on reading. It's a pretty uh, quick read. I've had a suspicion um, for a good while. I took a break from using my sketchbook and I would just do like my sketchbooks and my thumbnails in like Procreate or Clip Studio, all digital applications. And I feel like it was 10 times harder somehow. I blamed myself at the time. Then I picked up my sketchbook and started doing like a bunch of thumbnails and it was just so easy in comparison. So in this book, he talks about that it's good to start with analog tools. And then eventually when you go up to the cleanup stage or like the final, go into the computer, if that's your preferred medium, putting down things on an actual physical piece of paper really does feel different. Number five. So if you have a social media account, I know this is really hard sometimes, but try to resist looking at the numbers um, because addiction is very real. I totally fell in this trap, um, particularly with Instagram, which I threw in the fire now because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. It was too much. But yeah, no, I spent so much time just like worrying and worrying like, oh, okay, we got to keep going up. Oh, I lost followers. Oh, no, I'm sad. And it is so bad for your mental health. With that said, so like, I mean, looking at numbers on occasion, just either on a weekly basis or I mean, even a monthly basis, just... Yeah, I just try not to think about it too much. Um, when you find yourself tempted, just be like, oh, I can go work on my art. I could go outside, look at grass and <laughs> touch grass or hang out with family or friends. So just, just more fulfilling things. Number six, stretch. Now, this is a big one. And I heard this when I was young and I did not listen because I was like, oh, nothing hurts. I could just keep drawing and everything's fine. And then fast forward to like mm, 10 years later and... I had severe arm pain that would prevent me from drawing for the longest time. I'm slowly recovering, but I cannot draw as much as I used to for long said periods of time. The plus side is I do not need wrist surgery or I guess nerve surgery, which is kind of the worst case scenario if you don't take care of your arm. So yeah, uh, avoid surgery <laughs> and take care of yourself and stretch. Uh, here are a couple of stretches. Uh, my recommendation, I mean, I'm I'm obviously not a professional, but what I've started doing was at least 30 seconds of each of these stretches before and after. And I also just like randomly started doing stretches when I'm like watching TV and stuff like that. And I've definitely seen a huge improvement. Number seven. So luckily I feel like there's less stigma around this, but um, references. At least a couple of years ago, 
it seemed that there was like a lot of um shame for using references and but they're not a crutch the, there is, it's good for your brain uh, to look at things and learn from them because you can't just like pull learning out of nowhere as as i stated before and and yeah it's good to practice without references but not using references at all will not make you a better artist um unless you're like going with like abstract art but even then like you know it's good to learn from life still i've heard a lot of people recommend pinterest for references i would say that do it for yourself or especially not sell it i guess or commissions because a lot of the stuff on pinterest does is copyrighted or at least the photographers or artists did not make it creative commons which means you can redistribute resell things just to keep it safe um there are free available options for photographs for example unsplash is a pretty good resource and also something that i really enjoy is uh taking photos myself and then using those as references number eight back with the references um when you're using references be aware of what you're looking at rather than just copying it for the sake of copying that was a huge problem for me when i was taking art classes they would have models and i'd be like okay uh, we just copy it i guess but i didn't really learn anything that way so it's good to be like all right this is how the light hits this rather than making a pretty picture it's a study so it's more important that you get the the elements rather than capturing like the the likeness or like the beauty of it number nine uh using shapes such as triangles and rectangles instead of circles for me personally it's helped a lot with um figuring out 3d shape for the longest time i really struggled with seeing construction and then that way you can see where things are shaded rather than just a sphere so for number 10 and if you do il big illustrations um i would definitely recommend taking time away from your art it's really easy to get tunnel vision something i do especially with commissions is that i would even though I'm sure I'm done, I would leave it overnight and then come back. And then sometimes I spot mistakes that I wouldn't have spotted otherwise. Sometimes not, but um, number 11, ask for critique. Even if um, the person you're asking for critique isn't an artist, they can often spot things that you probably wouldn't have noticed in some cases. So yeah, for me personally, I just like have asked my partner and I'm like, hey, um, does this look weird? And sometimes I would even have them uh, draw over it on a different layer with digital art and it looks a lot better at the end <laughs> rather than if i didn't ask for any critique and lastly art style is overrated um a lot of people worry about having an art style odds are you probably already have an art style without realizing it the amount of times i've been told that people like my style thank you but i i don't know what they're talking about because uh, my art just it fluctuates like crazy at least to me so it could be different in the eye of the beholder it's also i feel like it's better sometimes in the long run to have a little bit more of a flexible style or a flexible range of styles and then there's like always room for learning and everything don't worry about style it will likely show up when you least expect it yep anyway that's the that's the list i hope that was helpful thank you so much for watching um good luck with all your art stuff bye